Andrews University. Hello, hello. My name is Jessica and I'm here with AU Improv and we're gonna get to play with you guys tonight. Sound good? How many of you have heard of AU Improv or Improvisational Theater before? Raise your hand high, be proud. All right, how many of you have not heard of AU Improv or Improvisational Theater before? Some of you haven't heard or not heard. Well, soon you will all hear. Improvisational theater is a co-created sport. It's something that happens on stage. It's a story that's told on stage by you and by us. The way that works is we ask you for suggestions about what the story should be about. And the way that works is you raise your hand and I call on you. Because I don't hear voices, I just see hands. Make sense? Okay. So, I'm going to be asking you to raise your hand and give me a suggestion, but when your suggestion comes out of your mouth, I also don't hear, hear anything that has anything to do with the bathroom or the bedroom. So any blue humor, I am deaf to it. So might as well not even say it. Okay, so no blue humor, nothing lewd or crude from the bedroom or the bathroom. Those are the ground rules. Now we're ready to do the fun stuff. So, I just like to get an idea, give you guys a chance to figure out how this works. So I'm gonna ask someone, What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Go ahead and raise your hand. Yes. Tofu. tofu. She had tofu. See how easy that was? All right. So now that we know how to do it, our first game is something called double endowment. Now we're going to have Tiffany and Sam help us out with this game. Now Tiffany is going to make Sam do something, but he doesn't know what it is yet because you're going <laughs> to tell me what it is. So Sam's going to cover his ears. OK, Sam can't hear us. All right, I need something that Sam's gonna do, whether it's like scratch his ear, hop on one foot, spin in a circle, yes. Play golf. By the end of the scene, Sam has to play golf. Okay. Now, Sam is going to make, Sam is going to make Tiffany do something, something totally crazy, but something that she can do on stage without getting hurt. What is Sam going to make Tiffany gonna do? Stand on the chair. That might be a little unsafe. Let's have something a little more safe. Yes. What was that? YOLO. YOLO. Yodo. Did you say YOLO? She has to yell YOLO. YODO. She has to YODO. YODO. Oh, she has to YODO. Okay. Tiffany's good to come back. Last thing I need from you, remember, don't yell out what they're supposed to do because it's a secret. All right? But when Tiffany gets Sam to do his thing, cheer. And when Sam gets Tiffany to do her thing, cheer, so that they know they got it. Good? Yeah. And if Tiffany thinks she got it and she didn't, make sure you let her know kindly by saying, oh, okay? So either, oh, or yeah, good? All right, last thing I need from you guys <laughs> is something that's especially quiet. Something especially quiet. Yes. A mime. This scene is about a mime. <laughs> oh, this tuberculosis will never get me into mime school. <laughs> That's pretty sad, Johnny. I'm really, I really feel bad for you. Well, it's only been my dream all my life. Well, you know what? I figured that I could easily help you by bringing to you to one of the places where you have to be really quiet, and we would have to mime with each other. Well, I, I always loved the library. <laughs> but well, I, actually, you can't do this in the library. Yeah, that's probably the quietest place. But instead, Johnny, I'm going to bring you to some place where there are rolling green fields and the Scottish like it too. <laughs> Ready, Johnny? Well, Grab your bag. All right. <coughs> Sorry, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> all right, just place it down right here. This looks like the sound of music. Isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful. <coughs> what? A I'm definitely not wearing the right clothes for this. No, you're not. You should be wearing longer socks. <laughs> should be wearing socks at all. What are you talking uh, about? Sorry. <coughs> I'm kind of nervous. I, I don't. I don't know how to do this at all. Well, I will be your caddy, and you can instruct me 
or I can instruct you through mime, so we can, so you can learn to mime. I can learn to mime. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna hold my miming tools while we're out here in these green rolling fields. I guess they could be considered tools, and yes, I will hold them, because that is my job. I see, all right, well, um, the book here says that I'm supposed to take a nine iron. I'm sorry, I got scribbled out there, nine, nine iron. Nine, a nine iron. iron, okay, I'll take awesome. A nine iron. Oh, I'm sorry, that way. Oh, this way, okay. Well, I wasn't sure you were standing there. <laughs> Am I supposed to yell something? I... No, all right. Miming, right. You know, Johnny, you probably should have yelled for right there. Well, he didn't drop that hard, so I think he's not terribly hurt. Yeah, definitely not a concussion. That, that's good. <laughs> you know, he, he almost, he made that kind of weird noise when it hit him. <laughs> right, right, that, that squeaking good. noise. Like yeah, a, like almost kind of squeaking, almost like something was stuck in his throat, you know, like, you just okay. really couldn't get it out of there. You just got to force it out of there. And, um, you know. Oh, like phlegm. Well, sort of. Uh, but, you know, the phlegm is like flying out just rapidly, and you just apparently keep That's throwing disgusting. It out. Well, uh, some people consider it an art, so I wouldn't judge them. They consider vomiting an art? Not vomiting, just sort of expelling vocal sounds. Like whatever you want. Like singing? Sort of like singing, but uh, it sounds more like you're, you're going through adolescence. <laughs> like squeak? Like squeak? Not really squeaking at all. It's more just like kind of, you know, ups and downs and all around. Well, when I was younger, my voice used to go up. Uh, yeah, it I used to go up some, some, like, Sometimes <laughs> I used to do that. Well, it happens to the best of us. It really does. Mm, sorry, that's the tuberculosis, probably. Maybe you should cough it out. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I'm, yep, see, it's come. It's, Did it, I help? It, well, <coughs> it was more the, <laughs> yep, something like that. You really gotta <laughs> expel it, though. Oh, okay, I'm um, like, <laughs> no, not <All> really. Right. <laughs> uh, tell you what, okay, you hit the golf ball. Okay, Johnny. But instead of saying four, uh -huh. I want you to yet let those people know that there is a ball coming and they're going to get hit. Just, you know, whatever you think they need to know. Okay, Johnny, here we go. I forgot how to golf. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no! Nature. Never hurt me out there. No, and nature is telling me that they're not accepting what you're trying to do. Uh, uh yo, you know what yeah, you need to do? You, 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 you. Oh! I should have put on my suspenders and leader hoods and. Well, why don't we go get our proper uniforms for okay, that night Okay, yes. Thank you, dear. So, was that acceptable yodeling? Give her a hand for her yodeling. All right. Our next game we have for you is something called halftime. What's going to happen is Nathan and Jessica are going to come up here and they are going to perform a regular scene for you. However, what they're going to do is after they've performed this scene, with nothing special in particular, they are going to have to cut it in half. Perform everything they just performed in half the amount of time. So that we're going to cut it down to one minute. Then we're probably going to cut it in half again to 30 seconds. Then maybe 15 seconds. Then seven. Then three. And perhaps even one. They've been known to do it. So what I need for you, from you for a suggestion is 
What is something worth listening to? Yes. What is it? Hymns. All right. You got to say hymns when you're in PMC. I think it's a law. So, okay. So hymns is a suggestion. They're going to act out the scene, and then we're going to cut the time in half. Did you see in the new hymnal? A Mighty Fortress of Our God is 42 now, which is my favorite number. It's my favorite, too. It used to be a totally different number. I know. Like, it was like, it was way earlier, and so, th like, you know how the weight of the hymnal is on one side because you have more paper? Yeah, it's so And I'm left-handed, and it really messed me up, but 482 is right in the middle. It's so I could easy. sing that song. I could sing that. And exactly to use the proper extension. posture? I know. This is my hymn singing posture. I, I can't be perturbed. See, watch this. If I push you from behind... I think I just pulled a hamstring. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should stretch it out. Okay. Hymn singing, hymn singing can be a really, like, moving experience, and you need to stretch out before you get going. A mighty fortress. That's good. That, I call that the quad warm-up. Just you gotta like, walk it off. Yeah. So, we're trying to practice for um, that school play, right? The, you're the you're auditioning thing. for... Yeah. Actually, I'm going for Martin Luther. <laughs> so, actually, I'm planning on... I've been, like, rubbing my head right here every night. <laughs> trying to, you know, let the... Yeah. the hair go loose. I've been going for the door. The door. Oh, oh, that I can nail the 95 Theses. Yes. That's right. I remember. That's like the second leading role. Second, and it's silent. Solid. You're real solid. Solid. I appreciate that. Character. Yeah. I've been actually been working on my triceps and this right arm. Mm -hmm. Do you see them? Well, they're there. Yeah. I've been working on my sound effect. <laughs> Do you know what that is? That was a door squeaky. Okay, let's try the, like, door rattling thing. <coughs> it's something. It's something. That might be something you want to work on before audition. Okay. Which, coincidentally, is tomorrow night. So, what I would do, I'm going to practice my monthly walk. Okay. So you practice your door. I'm going to be, like, fervor with the spirit of 95 Theses. So just be ready. Okay. okay. And action. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Was it right? No, I Kill don't it. think the door should Cave violently in. shake. Well, so, let's try it again. Okay. I'm going to have the 95 theses are going to be longer this time. And apparently somebody so. closes me right before you come over. Okay. Here we go. And action. <laughs> well, Still too much? Too much action? I don't know. I don't think that. Um, doors chest bump people. Okay. Okay. okay All right. Last time, let's last try it time. again. All right, and let me know what I'm doing too. Just let me know. Yeah. Here we go. Action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you didn't move, so that's good. Yeah. But the grimace, maybe you should just. Just maybe hit a little lighter. <laughs> oh, that's tricep, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the tricep. I think okay. we're ready, though. Okay. I'll see you at tryouts. You got it. Yeah? All right. So they are going to do the same thing they just did, only in one minute. So hopefully they remember everything they just did. They have to do it in one minute. So on your mark, get set, go. 482, Mighty Fortress. Used to be a different number. I know. I'm like left-handed, and it's all like off-kilter. It, it falls. Yeah. But now I can do that stance. All right. You have to get the proper posture. Ooh. Oh, I just pulled the hamstring. Well, you gotta warm up, hymn singer. Him, mighty fortress. That's good. That's good. How are you feeling? Walk I it just off. Just gotta walk it off. Walk it off. Good. Just gotta keep. You getting ready for that hymn sing? Yeah. That play we're trying out for. You been out, you been trying out for the play? Yeah, I'm gonna be Martin Luther. I've been rubbing. I'm going for the door. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Second solid leading role. Character. Mm -hmm. Silent. Solid. You are silent. silent. Oh, and silent. Well, let's practice. Okay, let's let's practice. try it out. Oh. Monkly walk. Shut door. Well, try that again. Two. Oh. Too no. much? Yep, last time. Hit, uh, hit lighter. Triceps. <laughs> uh, 
All right, these newfangled watches are really hard to do. But anyway, all right, they're going to do this next scene in 30 seconds. Same thing, 30 seconds. We're cutting in half. On your mark, get set, go. 42. That used to be a different number. I know. Oh, I pulled a hamstring. Oh, man. The almighty <laughs> fortress in. You been practicing? Been practicing a lot. Robin. I want to be a door. Okay, try it. Too, no. too much? Let's yeah. try it again. Oh. Okay. No, no, no. Hit lighter. Hit lighter. Okay. Check out those triceps. All right, 15 seconds. Go. Oh, 42. Walk it off, buddy. Want to try that door? I want to be a door. Hit me. Too, mu uh, too much? No. Maybe too far. One more time. Oh, triceps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Seven seconds. Go. 42. I would just hit me. Walk that off. <laughs> Too much? Oh, okay. One Silent. more time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you think they can do it in three seconds? Oh, yeah. All right, three seconds. Go. 42. Too Try many. Fighty. <laughs> dare we go for one second? Yeah. We dare. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. Go. Triceps. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd like to direct your attention to John 10:10. 10, 10. John 10:10. 10, 10. What do you have in the pew there? Is that New King James? Is that New International Version? I'd like to just share with you John 10.10 10 from the Message Bible, which says, I came so you can have real and eternal life. More, better than you ever dreamed. Would you pray with me? Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you very much for your love. Thank you for this opportunity to spend time together. Thank you for this week set aside, for good friends, for your word, for this moment. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Uh, I look forward to things a lot. I, uh, I've been looking forward to this right now when I would have the chance to stand here with you. I, I look forward to stuff. In fact, uh, it was dawning on me, I was thinking back about this, I have lived every day of my life that I can remember. I mean, maybe there was a time when I was really, really young, I, I'm not remembering it, but at any point, grade school, if you were to come up to me and say, if, if, as long as, you know, you might be frightening to me at this point, but if you came up to me and you said, Dave, what are you looking forward to? I'd be able to tell you. Well, I'm looking forward, my buddies and I, we're getting together and we're playing some baseball after, after school. I, there'd be some specific show that I got to watch on TV, that one program per week that we got to watch on TV in my household as I grew up as a child. Or maybe there'd be some trip that we were taking or something going on my brother and I were going to do. We're going to play out in the woods and build a fort, whatever it was. Every single day I had something I could tell you that I was looking forward to. I'm that kind of person. Anybody else like that? can just name something you're looking forward to. I could talk to you about tomorrow, something I'm looking forward to. The next day I'm looking forward to. The day after that I'm looking forward to. I really, I'll admit it, I am driven by having fun. I am. I am a little bit. And in fact, as a uh, guy who's been involved in youth ministries and so forth uh, for, for most all of my life, every once in a while I've, I've, I've kind of had this moment where somebody says, says something about entertainment. And the idea is, you know what, you, you shouldn't be so worried about entertaining people. Can I tell you a little secret? I, because I think I was asked to share a little bit in my experience, my walk, my journey with God, and how I meet God. And I got to tell you, the Jesus I know <laughs> is deeply entertaining. I've had somebody say it in such a way that made me feel bad about the idea of entertainment. If like, if, don't, don't entertain them. Well, I went and looked that up. 
I'm just that way. So I went to, uh, I went to uh, let's see, my dictionary and, and looked it up. So here's what it means to entertain. To hold attention, to hold the attention of pleasantly or agreeably. I'm not sure that sounds all that bad, really. I, th I think, think to hold one another's attention pleasantly might be a good thing. The next one down says this, to have as a guest, to provide food for. I, I like that one, too. I like that one. I'm still looking for the one that's a bad one. To admit into the mind and consider. I, I think maybe entertaining something might be a good thing here. And then this one, to hold in the mind, to harbor, to cherish. I kind of want to suggest that this God of ours entertains. He entertains by providing for us food for us. He entertains by being one who we could cherish and who cherishes us. He entertains by pleasantly holding the mind. And you know what? This is so important to me because I grew up in uh, well-churched. Anybody else well-churched? Do you know what I'm saying? I grew up in a pastor's family. I went to church, went to church school. I, you know, the felt boards, my territory, I knew all of it. In fact, I could tell you the stories. We had records back then. Uh, they were black, kind of, anyway. <laughs> and and uh, we had all the Bible stories, and we would listen to the Bible stories, and I knew all the stories, two or three, you know, ways even. <clears throat> and so, uh, I'll be honest, I struggled a little bit with getting bored sometimes. Anybody really have a thing against boredom in the room? I do. Well, I, it was, my, uh, it was about, about the same time as you guys. I was a junior in college, and I ran for an office. Uh, at that time, a, a campus ministries thing that we would uh, have a student leader in, in campus ministries to direct um, you know, the ministries. And, and so I ran for that position. I, I, I gained that position for the next year, my senior year in undergraduate school. And a, a young lady came, asked me if she could meet with me. And I thought, well... Why, why shouldn't you be able to meet with, with me, really? I mean, it seems fair. And uh, so she wanted to meet for a supper, and we sat down across from each other at the supper table. I sat down, she sat down, and, you know, we just had a couple of niceties, pleasantries, and talked back and forth for a second, and then she brought it up. She said, you know what, I just have this question for you. I'm wanting you to know why you did this. Did, did, why, why did, why, what, I did, don't know what I did. And she said, well, it's just very confusing to me because you seem like such a fun person. Why would you run for that office? There's just an odd thought to me. You're so fun, why would you be involved in these kind of churchy things? Why would you be involved in ministry stuff if you, I mean, you seem like you have so much fun and like you love life was kind of her implication and you, you kind of go to church to die was her kind of basic point. And to her, God was in this very churchy box, very tiny churchy box. It was an old God. It was a God that didn't smile. It was a God that didn't laugh. It was a God that didn't have much fun. That summer, I worked at camp at uh, Camp Asabel. And in fact, uh, how many of you are camp workers? Look around. Those of you who are not, look around. See the hands. These are people that are a little bit crazy, so be careful around them. <laughs> not normal. Anyway... I am a night person, night people among us. I am with you. Um, I'm a night person, so it was kind of disturbing to learn that our, uh, our worship times were going to be so early in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, and I would kind of get my, yeah, and I, saw, I just saw somebody's face go, whoa, yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> that was kind of my face at that point. You know, I'm just hoping to get my own pants on because it's not going to be cool with these nine-year-olds, if I go out there, kind of some weird dressed up, I get to the cafeteria area where I sit down at a picnic table, picnic table to my back, the, the top of the table across my back, very comfortably, and I sit back against that and kind of prop my arm at 6.35 by now in the morning, and I, I, I uh, learned <laughs> that if you open your eyes <laughs> wide enough, long enough, they kind of create a candy shell, and you can get some really good rest that way. <laughs> and, uh, hey, Dakota, don't be trying it now. Anyway, so, 
So I'm, I'm now there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm comfortable. I'm not to be disturbed. And uh, then I'm disturbed. Because the pastor, the, I'm well-meaning, I, I know he was well-meaning, but he began to t- share this parable that is kind of an anchor point in, in the story of how I see and how I've come to see God. Uh, he shared the parable, we're in a boat. You're in a boat, and you've got all your things in your boat, you've got friends in the boat, you got, anybody have a collection of any sort? Anybody collect anything? What do you collect? Coins. Well, that's helpful. <laughs> coins. In the boat, coins, good, rare coins, just pennies, anything? Would you stop? Do you pick them up? No. Okay, I didn't think. So, okay, so what other, what else do we have? Something for back over there, some sort of a, some collection. I'm sorry. No, I heard what you said. I just meant I'm sorry. Okay, they're awesome. No, I'm just kind of making fun. I don't even have a clue what we're talking about right now. Stereoscopic, hip, hypnotic, their, their views. I don't know what that even means, but they're uh, stereot- stereotropic? stereotropic views in the boat there. And so don't trip over those. Uh, but anyway, so you've got all the stuff that matters to you in the boat, and the boat, you're trying to get to the far shore. Now, this is a parable, the far shore. You've been in this boat before. You know what I'm talking about, right? What's the far shore? Yeah, it's heaven. It wasn't a trick question. The far shore. You're supposed to get in the boat, you're in the, and this, the boat is the Christian journey. So you get into the boat, and you're heading to the far shore. As you start going toward the far shore, the wind and the waves come up. And you're there with your friends and your coins and your stereophonic hip- hypnosis tools. <laughs> and, and you're going to the far shore, right? And as you're going along, the waves start to kick up and they come up over the, what are they, is that gunnels? What is that? I don't know what that would be, but over the sides of the boat. And it begins to fill the boat and, the, and now lightning and stuff's crashing. And the, the pastor pauses and says, and, and right now you need to understand that the thing that's important is to get to the far shore. You've got to be willing to take the coins and dump them out. You got to take your views and, get, and dump them out. <laughs> that sounds like some sort of metaphor there. I don't know. But you got to be willing to throw things over. At this point, I was remembering that he had said I had some of my friends in there. I didn't know if he was saying, like, you're just like launching people overboard, how this was working. But then he paused to say, because you need to remember the goal of the Christian life. What is the goal of the Christian life? To get to the far shore. Something in me revolts at that idea. Have you believed in a far shore Jesus? Is that your Jesus? Is he way over there? I, it made me think of when I was 13. <clears throat> I was 13 years of age and I wanted things that I could not afford. And I was unemployable. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's funny, it's just... Feels me with sadness, but anyway. So I was unemployable. I would do anything that I could for, for a few shekels, a few you know, dollars. And in fact, I don't know, I'm just trying to fit in with our coin guy. Anyway, so, uh, so a guy came up to me one particular springtime and said, hey, I've got an idea. Would you like to make some money? And I just, knee-jerk response, I just said yes. <laughs> yes, I would like to make some money. Count me in, whatever we're doing, please. So I agreed to a job without full explanation of what it would be. I'm not sure if I would have taken it. Probably would have, just because I didn't know any better at this point. I probably would have. How many of you? How many of you go to camp meeting? Camp meeting for a week? Is that enjoyable? I see a really epic. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know who some of you people are that go to camp meeting. I just say, look, could you please do some little 13-year-old a favor, and use the bathrooms normally? Uh, I was responsible for cleaning the, these shower rooms and these bathroom things that were out in the middle of tent areas and so on, and there were like more than one, two, three of them. I don't know. I've kind of blocked it out at this point in my life. A lot of the, you know, the, all that investment get, went right straight to therapy. But I, so my responsibility was to clean. My responsibility was to make sure that they had enough paper towels and toilet paper and all the stuff that they needed in the bathroom there when they needed it. And, and I kind of had thought I would experience camp meeting otherwise normally. no. No, it would be every few minutes, it seemed like. Every so often, there'd be, you know, uh, do you have, like, the, at the camp meeting, you go to the, the, uh, the announcement 
thing, locating, do they still call it locating? They called it locating when I was a kid. I don't know what we were locating there, but I guess it's where lost keys came, and so we located stuff. That, but they, from, the, from the loudspeaker, you, David Ferguson, David Ferguson, please come to locating. David Ferguson, if you care about us at all and our bathroom needs, please come to locate. It was terrible. I couldn't experience the camp meeting very well. It was awful. Now, at the end of this time, it was a little bit better, made a little bit better by the fact that I was handed some cash as we had agreed upon. But I tell you what, man, it was, it was, you know, that was some sort of blood money there. I don't know. And, but, but imagine that this happened. It did not. It did not happen this way, but imagine it had. I show up for the payment, pause there dutifully, and the gentleman who is going to pay me turns to me, and with this look on his face, he's just, he's actually growing misty-eyed as he begins to say, Dave, the work you did on those bathrooms, I mean, before or since, there's never been, a, it was so wonderful. The work, I mean, it was just, the place was immaculate, clean, lost and found. It was wonderful. There were always ingredients as needed in their appropriate places. People would end their morning walk just going through the bathroom area <laughs> to just kind of start the day. Had to kick one church out of there for their fellowship meal. It was just, I mean, it was wonderful in there. David, I want to just make this pledge and this promise to you as long as I have anything to do with it for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life, young sir, you can clean those bathrooms. <laughs> and I got a question. If getting to heaven is so joyless, like cleaning the bathrooms. What? Why would you think I want an eternity of that? Is yours a far shore, Jesus? At about your age, I began talking to Jesus about this. Jesus, I know I'm not particularly normal. And I need to know if you're okay with that. And he began to share with me over some time and through scripture, Dave, I'm less normal than you are. A little lady once wrote, every single person in this room is given a power akin to the creator. It is the power of individuality, uniqueness, another word for bizarre, different, weird, not predictable. And I want to just challenge you because what I began to ask God was, look, could you take me to the stories that I've read for all of my life, that I've heard at night when I was going to sleep, could you take me to all these things and could you show me something different? Could you, could you bring about some new revelation? Some, you know, is there a mystery to be seen? Are you dead and old? Are you alive and surprising? About this time, I was hearing people talk about humor in the church and how that was kind of a bad thing. And I've got to tell you, I always puzzled over this question. How is it that the one who, well, I mean, you do know that you're more healthy if you laugh, right? If you're more healthy by laughing, I, I'm trying to figure out how you can convince me that the one who made us isn't the best at making us laugh. The idea that you or I would be more humorous than God, I think, is kind of absurd. For the Bible in James will say every good gift comes from the Father. And I wired you up to laugh. It will sustain you. It will power you through those tests, through an all-nighter. It will help you through discouragement, this God of ours. And then we read the Bible and we find a way to dumb him down to some very tight, quiet place. 
And I just need, I, I know there will be enough of us talking this week that will help paint the breadth and scope of who Jesus is and who God is. And so I don't feel concerned right now that you're going to take me to say that God is only just mirth and laughing and just joking around in a big whoopee cushion. I'm not saying that. But I will tell you, I would not lay my life down on the bet that he would never use a whoopee cushion. Because I think he's funnier than any of the rest of us in the room. He is far more appropriate as well. But you read the pages of Scripture. Go to the beginning. Go to the beginning. And this is Jesus in the beginning. John says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Not anything was created without this Word. He was there at the beginning. And he speaks stuff into existence. He's been planning this. What if God looks forward to something every day? Not just me. What if he looks forward to something every day? I wonder how far ahead, because he says stuff like, when you were in the womb, I knew you. I've been looking forward to this day. I've been looking forward to the day I would speak in trees like little broccoli. would go, blah. <laughs> I was looking forward to that giraffe's neck and that big old elephant and that, we just, and mankind, I so look forward to you. Can you see him there? I don't know how you picture it happening. Does he kneel down in the mud? Do his knees make an impression? I don't know. Does he occasionally glance into the water? I don't know how it works just to see his own reflection as he packs the mud together. Does it look like a person before he leans over and breathes and the God of all things, Jesus Christ, kisses us into existence? And Adam comes too. You wonder about that moment. Because this is not like a normal baby. This is a full-grown baby man. <laughs> right? Have you seen an animal that's grown a little closer to full-grown than baby baby? Like a horse? It comes out and it's like... <laughs> you know, <laughs> walk through me, Adam. Oh, I've been dreaming of this moment. Come on. How does it work? I don't know. Maybe he's just absolutely perfect. I don't know. I find it interesting that the very first thing that God will ask Adam to do is, would you please, I, I've, I've made a few things. <laughs> and what I'd like for you to do, <laughs> you don't mind standing here, prop against the tree if you need to, but I, I'm going to start sending the animals by, <laughs> and you just, you just let fly with stuff. Just I mean, does, does that, he's never spoken before. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> I had to figure out a name for this thing. <laughs> okay, so just send him by, and then God starts to parade the animals through, and there goes <laughs> giraffe. <laughs> oh, they're down here too. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> yeah, squirrel. Hey. And a platypus. <laughs> Elk. Elk. Eagle. Horse. Horse says. Goose. I don't know. Goose says geese. Uh, <laughs> it's wondering, is there a... <clears throat> <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> is, there an, is there another one of me? <laughs> I just have to tell you right now, I'm rather pleased with that reaction. God's over there. He's been watching this whole parade. And he's been thinking, I don't know, maybe I made a dumb one. Oh, he got it. Good. <clears throat> Comes over, psh, onto the forehead, down goes Adam, right? 
and there's a surgery, and Eve is made. And then the next moment, I, I, you know, God just lays it out there. I, I can't help myself but try to imagine what it's like. And this is part of what I'm saying. Spend a little of yourself on imagination. Do you know God says that what he's making for you right now is beyond your imagination, better than it? Some of you aren't making that hard for him. I'm putting the bar high. So I imagine, I imagine, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but I'm imagining that Eve comes to first. That's just the way I imagine it. So there they are, Eve. I mean, surely that was, I mean, that was already there somehow. And then very gracefully, far more than I could, up she comes, turns and sees Adam. And then goes... Uh, <laughs> Adam, on the other hand, here's Adam. Adam's down here. You know, you know, guys, how this would go. <laughs> he sees Eve. Oh. <laughs> now, this is all one day. This is day one. God, I expect would have had to have had a pep talk with Adam, right? Okay, now, here's, here's the deal. <clears throat> you just go over and, at, and just go talk to her. Just, just. There, there's a reason I had you practice on, with all the animals. But so, <laughs> so you confident she'd be hot? Just over and talk. She's right up. Just talk to her. <laughs> what? Just, just, Adam, just go, just talk, just go. I mean, you are the last man on the face of the earth. Just. I don't know, I, how is it that we turn this into such flat, boxed up, tiny, empty boat God? You realize children loved him. Play that in your imagination. Jesus, of course, there in his white robe and beauty pageant sash. <laughs> Children assembled. Children, I've gathered you. <laughs> so that I might share some beatitudes. <laughs> We're going to speak of justification, sanctification, glorification, propitiation. <laughs> All those. Listen, you know, it's not the way it would work. Can you imagine, can you see that moment when finally Jesus says, no, no, let them come to me, and a young mother comes up with a little boy. They've just had the conversation. <laughs> listen, son, listen, son, you will not misbehave. You will, look at me. <laughs> you just be quiet. We will, I will, don't make me, I'm, I'm right here. Just, she. <laughs> so there he is, little guy. <laughs> no one. And Jesus, you know Jesus, this twinkle of the eye Jesus. Jesus has been looking forward to this for years. And there he is, honoring the mother. And I just can't help it. I think he sneaks in one of these. Right in the ribs. <laughs> he did. He did. He did, he did. <laughs> Can you see Jesus? I, I've often wondered how many days Jesus came home with grass stains on his white robe. Because I see that Jesus. Not just the far shore Jesus, the in the boat Jesus. The in your room Jesus. The laughing until crying Jesus, possibly milk. <laughs> Jesus. Because you know what happened about the time they get that tickling thing, he just starts to kind of trot, kind of start that adult run where a child will still, you can't go too fast, or they won't chase. You got to go just fast enough, and the chase starts, and they're chasing, chasing, chasing. 
Some other little guy starts to, hey, they're running. It's like dog whistles for children. It's all they chase. Everybody's chasing. That fast little kid, everybody picks first. He comes whipping off the corner there like nobody really saw him and just leaps and grabs Jesus' robe, and now he's skiing down the hill. <laughs> Give just enough time for the others to catch Jesus too, and now they're on top of him, and they're rolling and tickling. And la Is it that kind of Jesus? I find it more offensive that he might not be that kind of Jesus than that he would be. I think that among all of us here, he's the most fascinating. He's the most funny. He's the most caring. He could brighten your day fastest. Uh, I'll show you this picture. <clears throat> Somewhere. Okay. This picture, yeah. No, oh. um, <clears throat> that's, my, uh, that's my family before my son was born. In fact... I'm the one with the hat. Um, there's, my, there's my wife and my two little girls. Alyssa is the youngest, and then Emily. And I think Emily was probably almost five. I think almost five. When Emily was three, we went to Disney World. And Disney World is a fun place to take children. So we went to Disney World with another family. We're going into Disney World. The other family diverts into the gift shop. They grab a book and a pen. This turns out to be an autograph book and an autograph pen. And I did not know what this meant. I didn't know wh why we would do such a thing. But now we have to buy an autograph book and an autograph pen for little Emily. Turns out there are a lot of very, uh, at Disney World, there are a lot of fairly large-headed creatures <laughs> that, um, that have, are as of yet primarily unarrested. And, uh, and apparently, you're supposed to get autographs from these people, these things. Well, this is, I mean, I, I, kind of ridiculous, but uh, so the little two little girls go off uh, and the other family go off to get autographs in this, this uh, kind of large-headed creature in front of us, and Emily wants an autograph, but she doesn't want to go get the autograph. <laughs> so guess who has to go get the autograph? My wife, of course, has to man the video camera. So I go off to get the autograph, picture if you will, large-headed, big, bulbous-headed Captain Hook, and he's got problems with writing in the first place. <laughs> children surrounding, children, children, and me. <laughs> Mr. Hook, can I bother you for an autograph? Oh, sure, Johnny, you go first. And you. It was awful, it was terrible. So this one particular point in the pathway that we there was a there was, a, it was I'm not sure if it was a squirrel or a possum or a raccoon or something but it had a very unnaturally shaven portion of its head and a tutu. Again, I'm not sure how this guy's not in prison. But <laughs> there, there he was, and autographs were needed, and so autographs were sought. And I went over to get the autographs, and as I'm standing there in line for ever because kids keep coming there in that neck of the woods where the little cars that can't really go anywhere are running around in a circle, and then there's Mickey's Playland down that way, and we came from the other. And so I'm, I'm standing there waiting in line, and I catch the eye of my wife, and my wife, start, wife starts doing this. <laughs> my wife starts doing this deal. From across the way, she had been videotaping, dutifully, but it gets old after a while just seeing me there look like I'm about to go psychotic on, you know, big head dude. <laughs> so I'm watching her, trying to figure... Well, you know, I mean, at this point, my only real option is to do this. <laughs> we do this back and forth for a couple of moments until finally I pick out that what she is saying is, where, where, where is Emily? Do you have Emily? <laughs> Talk cardiovascular moment there. She had been videotaping, thought the woman in the other family had the hand of our daughter Emily, and I did not, she did not, and Emily was gone, always willing to be an adventurer. Nowhere to be seen. So my wife went back the way we came, calling out, Emily, Emily. The young man in the other family went another direction. I went down a pathway over here. Emily, Emily, I'm, I'm, I'm jogging quickly. Emily, Emily, and I see her in a distance. She had, we had this little kind of ponytail-ish thing that, you know, it was just kind of like a little thing, floof of hair. So she would run around, and we could. And so I saw it there. Somebody had nicely put little steps up to the window of product for Disney, and she was there against the glass, <laughs> just looking at stuff there. And as she looked, I, I come running up, and I grab her around the waist and pull her this way, but she's still committed to the glass. 
Emily, you don't understand. Emily, Emily, thank you so much. Emily, thank you so much, Lord, that we have found Emily. Emily, you've got to stay with me. You've got to stay with Hold my hand. Emily, hold my hand. I got up, turned, and, and she slipped right out of my hand. <laughs> I reached down, I grab her hand again, and, and she's trying to get away from my, Emily, it is not safe. You must come with, I'm now mumbling. You've, you've got, your mother is, and 3,000 other people that direction are just going crazy, right? You must hold my, you, I am your father. <laughs> You will hold my hand. So I'm now dragging this child down the street. She's kind of longingly looking back. And then she relaxes. She knows it's no use. She finally relaxes, and she's walking along with me. And then I could feel it. I could feel an idea in her hand. I could feel an idea had formulated in her head, but I felt it in her hand. I looked down, and she had this little... <laughs> holding my hand. She, Daddy, I think I want to hold my own hand. Do you know, I've told that story an awful lot in the course of my life, and usually I've told it to represent the fact that it is not safe for you this week to go without your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ. But I want to suggest to you maybe there's another way to look at this too. I want to put a different picture on the screen. Yeah. I think the God of the universe cares that you're safe and you make it to the other shore. What he really wants is that in the moments when you have every choice known to man, that you would turn and throw your arms around him. What if he's been looking forward to that today? Some of you here don't know him. He is the craziest one in the room right now. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I have plans for you plans for a future and a hope and good things, not just plans that take you down. No, and I will be found by you, declares that kind of God.
Amen. Thank you for that. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much that you will always, um, you will always be found by us, God. Thank you that if we search for you with all of our hearts, you will never let us down, Lord. God, I ask that you will open up our hearts this week. Open up our hearts right now, Lord. Help us to see you. Help us to feel you. Help us to know how much you love us. We love you, and we need to thank you for being here. In your name we pray. Amen. Just a quick announcement. Um, we're going to be having chapel again tomorrow at 1130, and we'll have this program tomorrow evening as well. Thank you for being here. <laughs>